subscribe, please. Hey guys, welcome back. It's your favorite GIMP with a limp, and I am here with something exciting for you today. It is Heroes of Blackreach by Devil Pig Games. All right, this is one that I have been uh, requested a couple times to take and do a little playthrough, review through on. So we're going to take and do a real focused review through. I've got the first scenario set up for the game, just a little taste of the game, if you will, not uh, not real in depth. I just want to show you guys how the game works and kind of give you some thoughts on it. Uh, I want to address a few things before we get started on the game itself. First, I'm coming straight down on it just because of the design of the game. Uh, the way it is with its squares and the counters, the way they're designed, it just seems like it works a lot better if I've got a real strict uh, top-down view for you guys. So that's why I've got the camera set up the way that I do. And I think it works pretty well for it. Now, first off the bat, I really want to like this game. I haven't really come down on the fence uh, one way or the other just yet. We'll uh, wait to the end if we play through the, the scenario here to give you some final thoughts on it. But there are some issues, right, straight off the bat that have me just scratching my head going, what the hell are you guys thinking? Uh, biggest one, and this one is just crawling up my spine right now, just irritating the living hell out of me, is the lack of a player aid. It is all in the rule book, which isn't overly massive. How many pages? 30 pages, all right? So not overly massive on what's in here, but this game has a lot, a lot of symbols in it, okay? I don't know, something like 20 or 30 damn symbols in the game, and that's a lot to try to keep in your mind, especially for someone like me who has uh, memory issues anyway, but just for people in general, there's a lot that you have to try to keep in your head, and a player aid would have gone a long way to alleviating some of that, even if it was just on the back of the rule book, you know, just the symbols uh, would have been a massive improvement. I have no idea why they did not include that. And if I want to find out what a symbol means, I have to take and flip through the rule book. Like, here's one, for example, this is piercing to know what piercing is or what a sniper is or twin linked. I have to take and look up in the rule book, find that specific section and then read up on whatever symbol it is. And there, like I said, there are a lot of symbols when it comes to this game, because this game is effectively the marriage of Warhammer, uh, Warhammer 40,000, the miniatures game, with a tabletop uh, counter, hex and counter type war game, okay? It's actually based off the Heroes of Normandy uh, game system, which they've done previously, which is based in World War II with tanks and infantry platoons and, and the whole nine. So they took what they already had that's you know proven to work and they just basically threw the Warhammer 40,000 skin on top of it with their vehicles and weapons and stuff like that. Uh, that's great, I'm, I'm fine with that. No issues with it whatsoever. Uh, I love the idea, I love the idea of being able to have a, a Warhammer feeling game that I can play a lot quicker, a lot neater with counters instead of having to worry about the expensive miniatures of which one miniature costs as much as this entire game. Now, in Games Workshop's pricing went the hell. That's why I got out of uh, 40K in the first place. Shit's too damn expensive. Uh, but getting back to it, I don't know why they didn't have player aids or something, anything in here to help out with the game. I I have not played Heroes of Normandy previously. I wasn't all that hyped up into that one. There's other tactical games, hex-based uh, tactical games that I'm more into, so I wasn't worried about jumping into one that was uh, square-based, even though it looked, you know, relatively interesting. But when you put the Warhammer 40,000 on top of it, I was like, okay, I really want to try that out. But if you're going to take and have that marriage, the miniatures game into this, into a war game, you're gonna have to have some of the features of the war game, like player's aids that have the symbols on them to make it easier to look it up, because most gamers that I know don't wanna have to go digging through the rule book every time they're trying to figure out what this thing is or that thing is. So that was a major, major uh, design flaw in the game. The components themselves are great, very high quality, 
all the stuff is thick. Let me hold up so you guys can see that. I mean, the counters are excellent. I love the counters. I love the feel of the counters. I love the look of the counters. Uh, sorry, I'm bumping the camera because I am, like I said, top down here. But uh, the boards themselves, they're great, nice and thick. The components are fine. They have no, I have no issues with that. I like the little wooden blocks for the uh, command tokens, which we'll get into that when we start playing the game here in a sec. So as far as the game is concerned, they've done well. It's the, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Quality of life type stuff that they could have improved upon, especially with just the player aids. That's just uh, a major drop of the ball right there. But, okay, getting into some other stuff. We're not gonna show it off too much, but there are an action deck for each uh, set of uh, each faction. And it's very similar to every action deck that you've seen in a game like this that it allows you to break the rules, all right? So if you have a unit that has already moved, it'll give you a chance to move again or fire again or do whatever. The action cards are along that line. They, get, they allow you to break the rules for whatever reason. Let's take a look at the units real quick. Each unit is going to have their recruitment, uh, what do they call this, tab. And it's gonna take and show what units are included, any special abilities. And then something really neat that they did here is that they'll have these open spots on them, okay? And these open spots allow you to put in upgrade tokens. So you can take and just, you know, plug one of these right in there and bam, you've got an upgrade. And actually I think I've grabbed the wrong upgrade for that, but it's same principle, they both get, they're both ammos, but. Uh, you can put in upgrades and some of these upgrades even have uh, vehicles. So you can take and put like a rhino in there for so many points. That's what these symbols are. Here's how many points the units are worth. Very similar to how Warhammer 40,000 works. So you can add things like grenades or heavy weapons and uh, vehicles and extra troops and, and real neat stuff. So interesting way that they did it. I really like that. And here along the side, you can see it's not a... Uh, just straight line. These actually connect to each other, which you can see over here with the orc units. I'll just grab up a couple of them. They didn't get any bonus little add-ons for this scenario, but this is like their main force. And then you see this lines up with the colors. So they get to tack on some shooters. And then there's a, what's this, boss mob, I think gets to add on to it. So you see they all line up. You've got to line up the colors that are here uh, located along the sides and any little upgrades that you put onto them. So it's a real neat way to create your forces, all right? You'll pick your little recruitment tabs. If you're playing some scenarios, some scenarios will tell you what units you get. Like this one, since it's the first one, tells you these are the very specific units each side gets, right? But some scenarios, or if you're just creating your own, just playing with a friend, you can take and say, hey, we're playing a 300 point game, or we're playing a 400 point game, whatever it is. And you'll take and look at how many points you have and you'll take and add up your points, getting all your units and then any upgrades. So it plays very similar to how 40K is going to play. Uh, one other thing you need to look is the star symbols on here. These take and give you your command tokens. That's why the Ultramarines or the Indianapolis Colts, if Gibby's cow had her way, uh, they have two, you see on their little uh, recruitment uh, tab, and then the orcs have three on theirs they get to use. And this is how you issue orders to your units and get them to start moving and all the other good stuff. So let's set these down. Take a look at some of the unit counters real quick, show you guys what's involved on that. Let's see if I can hold this up in the light. Okay, looking up here at the top, you've got your symbol. All along the right side here, that's where your uh, special effects are going to go. Uh, things like this, this shows you that they have uh, assault capabilities and any bonuses. If there's a number with that, it'll give you a, a bonus to your attack. Uh, these guys, that little symbol there, that one, the arrow with the negative two in it, is the move and fire. So if you move and fire, you get a negative two penalty, but you need to have that symbol to actually be able to perform a move and fire. Uh, the one next one down is suppression. This one's actually a range. So most units don't have a range, but some will. Like this is a heavy weapon plasma gun, so it's got a range. 
uh, six, I don't want to say hexes, squares, is how far it can shoot. There are some other symbols when it comes to range, but that's the basic gist that you need to understand. Down here in the bottom right, if it has this gray skull with that little uh, recycle looking symbol around it, that means that it flips over when it takes a hit. And then we look at the other side, you see the red skull that shows that it dies when it takes a hit. So looking at the bottom, these are your stats. Bottom left is gonna be movement. See, this one has a movement of three squares, which is diagonal as well. It's not just orthogonal. You can move diagonally in this game. Uh, and let's see if we have a spot. You see how in this, it shows that the this outcropping, this scenario, uh, scenery covers the diagonal as well. It's, it's interesting how they set it up. I don't have a set of terrain that really shows what I'm talking about, but it is neat how it works in the game. Uh, rest of the stats, the colors have to do, oops, let me hold it up so you guys see it. Uh, the rest of the stats, the colors have to do with their defense and then the damage they do. Going left to right, that yellow shield icon that is attacking against infantry, top purple is attacking against light vehicles, and then that bottom right, the gray one is attacking against heavy vehicles. So infantry, light, heavy, and then the plus is how much damage you, or the bonus you get to add to your die roll. So the higher that number, the better. The center one, the color of that is gonna determine what type of unit this is. This is yellow, so it's an infantry counter, obviously. If it's purple matching that top color, it's a light vehicle, and if it's gray, it's a heavy vehicle. The number in there is their defense, so that's the number you want to uh, hit or beat to take and cause damage or suppression to the unit itself. On top of that, there are some specialized units, like this guy is named Sergeant Valonis or something like that, and some of them have you know special abilities. This guy has limited range as well, he does a little bit better in assault, which is jumping into combat against someone, which you can see as a plus one against him or against that. A little bit higher defense, but it's an individual character. You know, you'll have sergeants or chaplains or uh, boss knobs and all the other type stuff that you have in the game. You'll have that type stuff. Let's grab up one of our orc units and let you guys see how some of those look. I think these are the golfs. Uh, you guys can see they don't have as many special abilities as the Space Marines, which is to be expected. Their stats aren't quite as good. Defense is a little lower. They don't do quite as much damage. But you can see there's a lot more of them on the board than there are of the Marines, which is to be expected. A little bit less movement. And then the other side of them with a little bit less guys on there and the rest of their stats. Not a whole lot of special abilities for them. Let's see, is there anything else I need to cover? I think that pretty well covers the uh, the basics. There are uh, terrain things to worry about on the, the map board itself, things like these little symbols, which will affect units that shoot or move through them. Unfortunately, it's another thing that I'm talking about that I wish they had taken and had a player aid with that type of stuff. Some of the stuff is easy to understand, like this, the yellow that matches the infantry. If you have a unit in there with that, uh, so if like my infantry were in there, they would get a bonus to their defense, all right? It's real basic. Some stuff blocks terrain, some doesn't. Uh, some will cause a line of sight to be obscured, which will cause a penalty. I think that's the penalty. And again, that's the thing that I'm talking about. It, it keeps checking me because I know I'm gonna have to pause for a second, look back in the rule book, uh, to clarify some of this stuff, I really wish they had a player aid. It's just chapping my ass right now. Okay, I was just glancing over the rule book again real quick. And the blue X is difficult terrain. The red dash little circle here is the impassable terrain. And then if you have a triangle looking symbol, kind of like this one that I'm pointing at here, with an X in it, that is uh, blocks line of sight, so you can't shoot through it. And then this one, where you've kind of got the red triangle with the negative two, that's obscuring line of sight. So tracing a line of sight through that uh, will take and reduce your chance to hit. This is what I'm talking about. Again, I know I'm harping on it with the, the whole player aid, is this isn't 
I mean, it's kind of intuitive. Some of the stuff, uh, you'll, I'm sure you'll get it after you've played so many matches, but it would make it so much easier if I didn't have to thumb through the rule book every time I'm trying to figure out, okay, what does the blue X mean again? What does the red dash mean again? Okay, what is this? Just a irritation and a quality of life thing. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and get started with our scenario itself. Over here to the right side of the screen, you guys can see this is the little scenario tracker. The Ultramarines are gonna start with initiative. That's why their symbols up here on the one. The Once this first turns over, you'll drop it down here to the three, and then the second turn, the orcs with their little green symbol will be there, so they'll have initiative on turn two, and then we'll just keep on going down. And this goes to turn four. Most points wins. The Ultramarines get one point for each orc killed. The orcs get two points for each marine killed. Real basic thing. We're just going to take and have them go at each other. Let you guys see how the basics of the game works. You can grab my little dice tower here. Set it so you guys can see it. I'll move it as I need to. Now, starting out the game. Okay. And again, there are cards to the side. I'm not wholly worrying about them. I'm just kind of showing you guys the game mechanics themselves. The... You're going to start with your order phase, all right? Like I said before, how many stars you have, for the most part, is how many of these little order tokens you're going to get. You're going to start with the lowest number and work your way up, okay? So Ultramarines have two. They're going to have two of these squares to give orders out. And these units are going to act first. Basically, you'll have your prep phase then your action phase, and then there's this supply phase, which is basically your second action phase where you can move the rest of your units, but not all of them are gonna be able to attack. The ones that can attack are only gonna be the ones that can take and move and shoot, which are the Marines in this one. So your the orcs, they're only gonna be firing three units a turn unless they lose some of those order symbols because the uh, none of those orcs over there have the move and fire ability, all right? Uh, you'll see how it works here in just a little bit. You are gonna keep these secret from your opponent. So you'll take and you know, uh, pick which units you wanna take and give your orders to. You'll place this block on the unit face down. And as you uh, play through the activation, you'll reveal your lowest number first, so number one, number two, and you'll go back and forth the Ultramarines will take and reveal one, then the Orcs would reveal their one, activate, perform their actions. Back to the Ultramarines for two, their two, three, three, you know, throw on however many you have, and then you go into your supply phase, your, basically your end phase. Now, since I am doing this solo, I'm not gonna worry about placing these face down since I'm gonna know where they're all, uh, all of them are anyway, and we're just kind of showing what happens. Now, let's see here, we're gonna put our, First one, thinking maybe on these Marines over here, have them run up and around, put some hurt down range maybe because they don't have a range limit and they can try to shoot some of those bad guys, some of those orcs. And we'll put our second one on our plasma gun, our heavy weapon. Ooh, sorry, I do apologize. I'm probably gonna bump that thing more than I want to. Now the orcs down here, they have shooters and what not stab us, what do they have? Slug us. Is that it? Slug us? Yeah, <laughs> they got slug us. And basically one shoots a little better than the other, and the other stabs a little better than the other. We'll take and move their shooters first. We'll do one, two. I think that's another slug us, so we'll go three down on this last one. Okay, and keep in mind, like I said previously, these would normally be face down, not face up. I'm just doing face up since I'm playing by myself. Uh, one other thing, if you ever run out of tokens, like you don't have any tokens to put out, maybe you have some units left, there are game effects that would cause you to have units left without any stars, so no order tokens to set out. That's called sudden, uh, sudden death, you automatically lose. All right, so we're gonna activate our first tactical Marine squad here. They're number one, and they have a movement of three. I'm thinking one, two, three, up to there, which would give me a line of sight to their first group. We'll do it that way. I am not taking and just stepping through here because I can't remember if you can step, or I think you can travel through your own infantry, 
but this is impassable terrain or a difficult terrain rather which you can only move one square in so if i stepped here i'd have to stop and you can't have two units in the same uh square and i will say hex uh one two three we'll have him go there you do keep the order token with them to confirm that this unit's been activated because again you will have the chance to move other units later in the game these guys are going to take a shot they have plus three but they're doing a move and fire okay so they're going to get a negative two to their attack so that effectively makes it to where their attack is a plus one instead of a plus three and they're shooting down here at these guys who have a defensive value of four and they're in terrain that has a bonus what is that bonus two or one two so that effectively makes it to where their defense is a six my plus one i'd have to roll a five or better uh, what are we gonna do do we try to suppress if i try to suppress because that's something you can do in this game is try to suppress and it takes and puts one of these tokens that reduces a unit's movement and attack and you remove the suppressed tokens there at the end. I am thinking it might be better to try to suppress because you do get to double your bonus when you're conducting uh, a suppress shot instead of a regular attack. So instead of, it would give me a bonus one to it, I do believe. It doubles all the, uh, the bonuses that you get when you're making your attack but you do not have the chance to actually do damage you can only do the suppression but we'll try the suppression we'll see how it works out okay so you bear with me because i'm going to be throwing a lot of numbers here we are taking doing the suppression that doubles my bonus to a plus six so that's good but I'm doing a move and attack, which is minus two. So that reduces it down to a four. Uh, no terrain in between me and him, but he is getting a bonus. So his defense is going to be six. So let me grab one of my dice here. Basically, that gives me a four bonus plus whatever I roll on the die against his defensive six. So I have to meet or beat that to take and put a suppression token on him. So let's roll it. See what we get. Come on, big money. <laughs> Son of a bitch. All right, nothing. That guy is done. I'm taking, turn that upside down to know that we've activated him. And we just missed. So now it's going to go to the orcs. They're number one. He's going to take and activate. Where is he going to move up to? Let's see. He'll go one, two, three. And he's going to move up to there because this. This terrain would obscure, but it's not in front. It's just right here. So this terrain has a bonus of one still to the defense. So it makes him a little more defensive when he's right there. That's good. And he can attempt to take and take a shot here at our ultramarines that have moved forward. Oh, wait, no, he can't. He'll have to do that later because these guys do not have move and shoot. I forgot about that. So he's not going to be taking a shot. Don't worry about that. But that is their first guy activated. We'll take and activate our second, which is going to be our plasma gun, which can do a move and shoot. So he's going to go one, two. He's going to move up to there and see what his stats are. He gets a plus three against infantry. Let's see. He would get a minus two. So you only have a plus one. And this guy has a plus one for his, so he'd five. So I'd need a four better to cause a hit. Screw it, let's go for damage. All right, so we're gonna go for damage instead. So I am subtracting two from him, okay, for doing the move and attack from his uh, bonus. And technically you do this after everything, so it's the, the end modification, not you know from his actual thing, but the result's gonna be the same regardless, so it doesn't really matter. All right, so we're going to roll it, see what we get. you got to be kidding me. Okay, this dice is going over to the side. That's a miss. All right, so my two orders have been activated. Theirs is going to take and move up their other shooter and get in range because he does have blocking terrain here that can't take. Uh, he can't shoot through. Let's see if he goes one, two, three. He'll move into this terrain which will make it to where he's more defensive. Wait, is that, that's impassable, right? 
Well, no, the blue is... Okay, so it took me a sec. I had to look at it to clarify because I was like, wait, this is difficult and uh, impassable. It is impassable to vehicles, light and heavy, and difficult to infantry. Okay, so he can move up in there. One, two, three. His movement would end there, and that will allow him to take and attempt to do some shots next time in a defensive position. So that works for him. We're going to have our other shooter move up as well. One, two, and three. So they've got defensive positions. That takes care of them. Now, all of our guys with orders have been activated and they've done their thing. So now we can move with the rest of our guys. Everyone else can take a move action in the supply phase. But one of the neat things is, okay, this is your list of movement actions. Declare your movement action. Possibility of a fire on the move. So this is the chance to where some units can take and fire during this phase, but others can't. Most of the orc units, they're cheaper, they're cannon fodder, but they don't have the fire on the move like the Marines do, which the Marines are gonna need because they're you know, up against it right here. So we're probably just gonna line our guys up. I moved them up. We'll hope their defense takes and works for them. We'll move up here. And unlike the order phase, the player with initiative will conduct this part of the game first, complete his, and then uh, the other player goes. So the Ultramarines are gonna go. We'll take and move up there. I don't wanna take and get into uh, assault combat with orcs just yet, because they'll take and probably beat the Marines on this just because they can outnumber them and get some bonus attacks in. So let's take and conduct our move fire. Uh, the sergeant does have less of a penalty. He only has a minus one instead of a minus two there. So, but he only has a plus two on his attack. Do I want to attempt to suppress or damage? Well, depends on who we fire at. He's only got a range of four. So one, two, three, four. He can hit either one of these guys. But if I double it, that gives me a four minus one, so a bonus of three to suppress versus a bonus of one to suppress against this orc that's gonna have a defense of six and this orc's gonna have a defense of five. So we're gonna have to go after him. We'll go for our attack. That's only, uh, only a four round match anyway. So let's take and go for the attack. We'll shoot on this orc, hopefully and cause a little damage. Should need a four higher. Come on, money, no more ones. Six, that's damage, that's what I'm talking about. So doing our damage with our modifiers, minus one from our combat total, our attack gives us just a total of plus one against him. That gives us a seven, which we will compare to his defense of four plus one for the terrain that he's in of five. So he takes a hit. We can see that he has the gray symbol, so he's gonna flip to his reduced side reduce stats and he is placed there we'll take and move up with our other guy we think one two three get our firing line going and he's got a line of sight and it does not look like it's going to cross this so we'll take and fire on the same guy hopefully we can get uh same result if we do we'll get a kill there which would be nice get us a point on the board come on big money two Gives us a three total, so miss. The Ultramarines are doing shitty as hell. All right, so let's crack out the orcs real quick because I don't want to run forever on this video. Uh, we'll just move them up into a firing line as well. I can pass that. Are these sluggas? Yeah, I think the rest of these guys are all sluggas and a boss. So we'll go one, two, three. One, two, three. Two, three. Oh, ooh, yeah, here's a neat thing. See how these two terrains do not connect right here? That means this orc unit can go one, two, and three and keep going because if he had just stepped here, that's difficult terrain he would have had to stop. So he'll move on up to there. We'll go one, two, three, and four. And I'll bump the camera again. 
have our orc boss move forward. And he doesn't have the bonus either. I was going to say, I'll let uh, the orc boss take and hang in the back, but screw it. He gets a good bonus to an assault, so let's take and move him in. Now, the units do have a zone of control around them, so you have there are rules when it comes to it when you're moving into an enemy zone of control. You can't take and move. You can move into an enemy zone of control, and then you have to stop, but the only ones who can actually do something in an enemy zone of control are units that can conduct an assault which are units that do have that sword symbol there at the top right you see there. So I do believe that finishes off our first round. So we will kick down to our second round, move this icon down. This shows us that the orcs are getting the initiative this round. And then we have to place our units again. So I'm gonna take a first shot with our plasma gun, and since we're probably not going to be moving this time, we'll take and shoot with this guy. And they're probably going to take and do the same thing. They want to get their shots off. Let's see. His attack is only a plus two. Well, plus two at range, that's pretty good. We'll take and have the orc ball shoot good, uh, shoot. And the rest of them, it looks like it doesn't really matter. The the shooters and the sluggas have the same. The sluggas have uh, better uh, close combat. So we'll have the shooters do their shooty thing, and then the sluggas can keep moving around to try to get into close combat. All right, same thing as before. We're going to start with who has initiative. That's going to be the orc boss. So he's going to take and conduct his action. We can see that he has a plus two. When it comes to firing at infantry in a defensive six, so that's you know pretty decent. He's gonna conduct a shot, and let's see. Uh, he's gonna go after this. Well, that's a defensive defense is a five here on these Marines. These guys are the sergeant and the plasma gun both have six. The sergeant's naturally six and the plasma gun is in terrain that gives a bonus. So he's gonna go after this order number two here, this tactical squad, try to slow them down a little bit because they'll be able to put out some hurt now that they're not moving and getting penalties. All right, so he's gonna fire. He's getting a plus two. There's no terrain in between the two of them right now. Uh, the tactical squad has a defense of five, so he's gonna need a three or better to take and cause some wounds. I'd say he got it. So, tactical squad takes a hit. They flip over to their wounded side. They don't do as much damage as they did previously. That is unfortunate. Plasma gun is going to do the same thing. He's going to fire. He gets a plus six to his attack. So, he's going to take, or not plus six, rather, plus three. He's going to shoot at this orc boss. Well, the orc boss has... Let's see, he has a defense of six. Let's try to, oh, who do we go after? I need to pick off some of these guys. Shooting here, they would it would get a penalty because it's passing through the terrain. Let's try to finish off the ones that we've already weakened. So now we're not gonna have a movement penalty. And we'll take and fire down onto this guy. Take and turn that around so I know that I've done him. See, plus three and nothing else affecting his shot. But this guy is going to have a defense of five instead of four. So come on, big money. Three, six, got him. Bam. And the orcs are dead. And when they die, they take and go under their recruitment tab because you need to keep track of it because of that little red number in the skull. When a unit takes and suffers that many losses. So if the shooters have two shooters that die, this gets flipped over, the opponent gets that many points and you lose any of the special abilities. Most of the things that you'll place here in the upgrade slot will stay, but you'll notice that there's a star there. So having this flip over costs them an order and makes them a lot less effective. So you're gonna take and place that underneath there so you keep track of how many are getting killed. We'll take and keep cracking at this. All right, so he's gone. That's our ones. 
two is going. He is going to conduct a shot, but unfortunately he's shooting through this, which is going to reduce his bonus down. He will fire at this one that's already wounded, hoping to get a Hail Mary shot. Effectively, he's going to be getting a negative one. Let's see, with a negative one, with a defense of six, oh, actually, there's no reason for him to shoot at him because he can't get the shot across. Um, what I'm looking at is there's the terrain here, the obstructing terrain that's gonna subtract two from his result, but he only has a bonus of one. With a defense of six, there's no way rolling a six-sided die for him to actually do enough damage to hurt this guy. So he can only take his shot at this tactical squad and hope for a six to take and actually cause some damage. Fortunately, the situation changed. I didn't pay attention, but oh, let's roll, see if they get lucky. You gotta be kidding me. There it is. Oh, look at that. The one thing they gotta hit. So they have a minus one to their score, brings it to a five, which is equal to their defense. So the tactical squad gets flipped over to their reduced side. That is unfortunate for them. All right, this tactical squad is going to take a shot since they're number two. And you can see that their stats are reduced, but their defense goes up because there's less of them, so they're harder to hit. So they're only getting a plus two now instead of the plus three they were getting. Sorry about that. And... Let's take and go for a shot at this orc boss. We got to try to take down their leadership. If we can, we can reduce some of the orders they're getting because they're not going to be able to take as many shots if they don't have that. All right, so rolling it. Come on, big money. And we'll roll it again. We got a four off camera. Hopefully it'll roll well again. Damn, dropping the dice everywhere. Three, no. And the four would have got it too. I should have just kept it. Oh, well, so that gives him a five against his defense of six. There is no dice, no love. Both orders are complete. The Marines are not doing well. All right, so the Orcs last guy, he's going to take a shot. He's going to fire on. All of them have a defense of six now, so it doesn't matter who he fires on. He's going to take and fire at this wounded set, try to take them down. See if they can get it. He only has a plus one to his stats. So to do damage, he's going to need a five or a six here. Now, he could go for the suppression, but he's hoping to get the kill. Four. Close, but no dice. The Marines were able to duck. Okay, so that's the last order. Now we're going to the initiative phase. The rest of the uh, orcs are going to take and move first, and they are definitely going to be running up. The sluggas are to try to get into close combat. So one, two, three. All right, so what the orcs are doing is they're trying to take and move into range to take and get some close assaults going on in the next turn. They'll take this one. It's not gonna be able to launch its assault until the following turn when it'll take and move on in. It just does not have the movement points. It would have to declare it ahead of time. Let's see, who are we gonna take and do? If we, I probably need to move this guy up because firing across from there, oh, he's already activated. But yeah, firing across from there is not doing any good. Let's take and have this slugger move up to here. He can continue to shoot. And this one's gonna go one, two, three. Ooh, should he go here? Yeah, he's going to go here because if he can move next to him, he can help him in the assault later. And this one, this slug is going to go one, two, three, get right on top. This one's going to go one, two, three, rush on in. That takes care of them. Now these guys, they can take and do a zero move. For, and this is what I understand of the rules, okay? Because of the movement actions, they can't do a fire action here during the supply phase. They can only take and do movement actions. So where does it say? Carry out the following actions. Take a movement action, blah, 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 with any or all of his units do not have an order token. 
the movement actions are listed here so they can take a fire action the ones that have not uh, got order tokens on them but it has to be a move and fire even if they don't take and move I'm wondering if it would be better to conduct the assault, but these guys have the bonuses. I really don't want to conduct assaults because the orcs are just so much better at it. So we're going to take shots and hope that we get some damage through to re reduce them. It looks like the rest of them are all full power. Okay, so we'll take and do a move and shoot, which a move can be zero. You can just pivot in your hex, uh, things like that, but his move can be zero, but he is still going to get that movement penalty. He's going to fire into the orcs directly there adjacent to him. So he is getting a reduction of one to his, or no, two. Yeah, two. He's basically losing his bonus. He needs to roll four or higher to cause damage to these guys. Come on, let's do some damage. No, <laughs> God, how many times have I rolled one this time? So nothing for him. He's going to take and do the same thing. He'll shoot at these sluggers here. Getting the same uh, lesser penalty, so he gets a plus one. So he's gonna need a three or better. Six, got it, here we go. Flip these guys over. So we did do a little bit of damage. Now we'll flip this down. Real close to the end of the game. The Marines are in lead, but the Orcs have the next turn to do some work. Okay, let's see. How do the Marines want to take? Probably start with this plasma gun, see if we can do some hurt to some of these guys that are right here on top. And let's see, both of these guys are wounded. Plus two, plus two. It really doesn't matter who I take the shot with. I'll take the sergeant and the orcs. They are going to go. Well, if I do that, I can move him up into the assault. And have him assist. So yeah, we'll show you guys an assist. He'll go one and two and two, three. These guys can't move in. We'll go three here to let these guys take a shot. Just on the off chance that uh, some of these others don't work out as well. Okay, the Marines have the the lead or the initiative right now. Plasma guns definitely going to take a shot directly across from them. Try to weaken these. Uh, shoot us or slug us that are coming at him. He's got a plus three, no other penalties involved here. So he should be able to get the damage no matter what for a change. Come on. Two gives him a five. That is enough to cause this token to flip, which will reduce some of the hate getting ready to come down on him. Now this guy is going to conduct an assault. Okay. So he's going to go one and two and you take and kind of half lay him across. So if he were in this to, uh, this hex coming across, you'd lay him like that, whatever, just kind of half in so you know what hex he's coming from, okay? Now he's gonna do that and the guy next to him is going to assist. So he gets to, uh, he, he counts as activating. That's why I'm placing an activated token on him to let me know that even though he doesn't have an order token, he is going to count as part of this assault. So it's plus three and then plus one for him. He gets to roll two dice, take the better of the two. And then if your unit is an assault unit, like these uh, Space Marines are, they get to roll two dice, add their uh, combat bonus, and then determine you know who the winner is. Okay, so this is the way I understand it. I just read it over again just to make sure. Uh, I could be potentially wrong on this, but I think I'm right. All right, so when you're looking at the counter, let's take and grab this one up. There is its assault bonus, but this is its bonus on top of whatever its combat score is, okay? So you're gonna take and roll two dice, you add the combat value, and then whatever bonuses that you get. So this unit gets a plus three to its close assault. It's got a plus one, and then it's getting a uh, plus one against infantry is just its combat value and then it's getting a one on top of that for the adjacent unit assisting in this close assault. The Marines have a plus two as their combat value but then their close assault is a plus one so they'll add three to their total whatever their role is and this guy's going to be adding the orcs are going to be adding a five total to their role. They roll two pick the best. 
All right, so they got a four. Set that to the side. Marines. Marines got a... Boy, they got obliterated. <laughs> they already had... I mean, these blue dice have rolled one constantly, man. Uh, the Marines just got obliterated on that one. So when a unit dies, again, it goes underneath its thing. And in a close assault, the attacking unit will take and move up and occupy the area. So one there. Let's see. These guys have already activated. The sergeant's going to go. He's going to fire at these orcs there in the back to keep them from pushing up. Hopefully kill some of them. We're going to take and add a plus two to his combat roll, to his attack roll. Two, two, four. God, the Marines are just rolling bad. Uh, that is enough, though. That equals their defense, so that's going to kill them. These are sluggers, though, which are going to go over here. So not enough to trip over anybody to broken as of yet. Their two is going to go, and he's going to take and conduct a close assault against the Marines. Total of plus three against the Marines. Ooh, the plasma gun. Plasma gun's interesting. He only has the knife symbol, so he doesn't get a bonus in his close assault, but he will get his uh, combat value, which is a plus three. Now, this is the way I understand it. I'm not too sure after reading the rules if it's just this it says it's the combat value. It would make more sense to me if you were only adding this number and not this number as well. But it says you add your combat value and then whatever special stuff. And the combat value is this specific number. So I'm going with what the rules say. I don't necessarily think it's written all that well, but we'll go with it. So the orcs total is a plus three against the Marines total of a plus three. So whoever rolls higher is going to win. They got a three. And then the Marines got a three. So they died, which is just going to allow the combat to continue. Uh, that was their two. They had initiative, so these guys are going to go. They're going to take a shot against these Marines over here. They got a plus one, so they're just going to be rolling a die. Hoping for the best, five or six will kill the Marine squad. Oh, nothing. All right, that takes care of our ordered units. Only ones that don't have anything left are these guys here and those orcs. Okay, one thing I did miss is the plasma gun here would get the bonus from the terrain that they're in as well because they do have a bonus plus one to their defense there. Uh, I looked in something, uh, I looked in the rule book and I cannot find anything about taking and shooting into an assault. I'm uh, going to assume that you can't shoot into an assault and just leave it at that. Okay, I was thinking about what to do with this last tactical squad because infantry do block line of sight to other infantry. So I can't like move him forward and fire onto these guys. And these have a special bonus. He's got tough uh, defense. Urgh. Um, he'd be getting a minus two, so I'd have to roll a roll of a six to even do damage over there. I could move him forward. One, two, and then conduct a shot. Or go one, two, and then conduct a shot onto these guys, trying to get them weakened because they would only have defense of four. I would have a better chance of getting damage through. So we'll do that, hopefully. One, two, move them just to simulate the fact they're moving. And they're gonna fire onto these guys doing a shoot move. They've got bonus of two, they're losing two. So basically they need a four or higher to do that damage, which they got. All right, so these guys get flipped to their reduced side. They are already activated. That's it for the Marines because they're down to three units. And these guys have two left. They can take, the orcs have two left they can act with. Okay, so these guys, even though we're in the supply phase, they can conduct an assault. So I'm thinking about taking and 
and ah, uh, he would have already activate. I was gonna say if I'd move him up to let the boss come in and help, but that wouldn't work. I see the boss is gonna have plus two is four, and this one's gonna have less. So yeah, we'll go for the boss, see if we can get another kill here. Go one, two, and he's gonna launch the assault into these guys. The Marines there, rolling two dice. The Marines don't have any other bonuses. The Marines are gonna have a plus three total for their combat total and then their attack against infantry. And the Orc Boss is gonna have a plus four total for his bonuses. All right, Orc Bossy. He's got a seven. And the Marines have five. So five, three, eight. Oh, the Marines beat him. So he is gonna get pushed back. I think he takes a hit. Let me take a look real quick. Yep, he takes a hit. So he gets flipped and moved back. Good job, Marines. Holding him back, holding back the line. So since that happened, these orcs will take and go one, two, and launch their own assault. Same principle, although their bonus is less. So they're only gonna have a plus three, which is gonna match uh, the Marines actual. Ooh, that gives them a nine. Unless the Marines roll a six, they're crushed on this one. Ooh, yeah, the Marines got pole smoked. Oh, well. Wait, did they have... Yeah, that was the last of them. They're down. So those orcs moved up. The orcs are doing pretty good. The boss is probably going to hang back since he's only got one left. I'm going to drop this down. And this is the last turn. Let's play it out real quick to see what happens. All right, the Marines only have, uh, oh, let me pull this off because he's not activated anymore. The Marines only have two units left. So first will be, first will be Plasma. And second will be him. We'll take and have the first be this orc because he's going to try to wound the Plasma before the Plasma can take and do anything, but he'll get a bonus from those guys. And we'll have this guy shoot second and then this guy assault third to try to take them out. All right, so orcs, they've got initiative. Beginning of the last turn, they're gonna conduct their assault here. They're getting a plus two, plus three versus the three that the Marines have and the one from the defensive terrain. So the Marines basically have a bonus of four versus the Orcs bonus of three. Whoever wins this roll is gonna matter. Ooh, five for the Orkies. Marines are gonna need a four better attack. They got the four, I think they're still gonna tie. Wait, nope. Orcs got it because I forgot they did activate these guys as bonuses, which did take it, so. And these Marines do get flipped and they are still locked into that combat. So I guess they'll just attack back since we're on the last turn just to see what happens, see if they can possibly kill off these orcs that are right there on top of them. Five against the orcs. The orcs are gonna need a six or they are gonna get killed. Yeah, orcs got killed, so. Pull that off. Are these guys shoot us? They're sluggers, so they're gonna go there. And the Marines will move up. And now they're number two. Uh, Orc boss is gonna block the line of sight, so he's just gonna fire here in the hopes of taking out the Marines. One shot, or taking out the sergeant, putting on some hurt onto him. One, so many ones rolled this round. So he's done. The Marines are gonna take a shot. Uh, the Sergeant's gonna take a shot at the Orc boss in hopes of killing him before the end of the round. Let's see here. Come on, big money. Does he get a bonus of two? All right. Three, oh, just one shot. He would've killed the Orc boss. All right, so that's their two. Their three gets to go. He's gonna launch his own attack into, ooh, and I forgot actually the, 
when the plasma gun lost, it would have been pushed back into this terrain. And then when it attacked back, it would have been here, not here. And these guys will just take and move up and conduct their assault here as normal. So basically, I was just one square off from the way that I handled it. All right, so they're conducting an assault. They're getting a total of plus three against theirs. Four. The Marines are going to need a three or higher not to die. Yeah, they got it. Those orcs took a hit. Was that their last hit? Oop, nope, they did have a hit left. So they'll end there. And that's close enough to the end. So this orc boss has one left. Yeah, we'll let him finish it off. Finish off strong. See how he goes. One, two, three. Conduct an assault. Sergeant to sergeant. Boss to boss. He's got an attack bonus of four in the melee against the sergeant's three. See who gets it. Four. Total for the orc. Oh, he got it. He kills the boss orc on his way out. Nice job, sergeant. You held it. Uh, that is only three points, though, for the Marines. They killed off three units. The orcs do win it. By one point, they killed off two squads, two tactical squads of the Marines. That was actually relatively close, close combat. I know I did not do everything perfectly in that. I don't have boundless experience with the game, so I do apologize for that. Um, but I did want to show you guys this game as quick as possible before I move on to a couple other uh, projects. And I have had some people ask me about it. Uh, some final thoughts real quick. This is just a taste taste of the game okay uh there's a lot more that it does have to offer there's a lot of vehicles there's dreadnoughts there's tanks there's transports there's six of these squares of terrain that are both double-sided so you can take and create multitudes of different terrain uh types they can be rotated all the different uh types real real cool like i said the uh Components are very nicely done, nice and thick. You're not going to be tearing up these counters. They're nice to play with. And if you're someone who does have eyesight problems, it's not so small that you can see it. It might get a little irritating with having all the different symbols to try to you know, eke out because a lot of them are similar. All right. And what they mean, especially some of these train types, you have to keep track of this means this and this means that. And it's impassable to this, but it's not impassable to that. And it's just difficult for this. There's a lot of nuance to the game. Uh, I do like the fact of how they handle the bonuses, the upgrades that you can put on units. I think it's real neat to take and uh, plug in extra counters that give you. Ooh, and I even forgot about using those things. Damn it. Uh, those ammo counters I had sitting down to the bottom. Each one of these would have given me plus one in an attack. I kept forgetting about it. I would have to spend that uh, before I conducted the attack, but that would have turned the battle. There were a few that uh, if I had had a plus one, not all those ones that I rolled, but uh, a few if I had had a plus one, it might have actually changed the outcome. So uh, there are only three of these little tokens per one of those that you get to use though. All right, like I said at the start of this, I want to like this game and I think you know, for the most part, I do. It's it's not bad. We haven't even touched on the bonuses that the cards get to add to the game with the fact that uh, they can be used throughout different parts. Uh, you see this as play when an enemy infantry unit receives a suppressed uh, marker. You know, it, all throughout the game, it's going to have special look conditions when you can use these cards. They change the basic rules of the game, but I want you guys to see the basics of it. So would I recommend it? I would recommend it to someone who's into 40K, all right, big 40K fan, and does not mind having to thumb through the damn rule book on the constant to figure the damn game out, all right? There's just a whole mess load of symbols that you have to try to keep track of in your head on what the hell's going on. And that's not even touching on the blast templates that have their own uh, Templates. Let me see if I can find it. Okay. See so this picture here. You guys can't even see it, but the blast templates have uh, images on them that you have to worry about and symbols too. 
neat idea. I like it. You know, if it hits under the blast template, it hits, whether it's your units or their units. So neat idea, but it's just a lot. And uh, the quality of life stuff like player aids are sorely lacking in this game. And they're sorely lacking to the point that it makes me iffy about playing it again because I'm going to have to take and sit down with the rule book and go over it and try to relearn the symbols. And there's going to be ones that I forget and I'm going to make mistakes over it because I don't have an easy reference to look to. Now, I did not check BGG to see if someone has come up with one. It would not surprise me if someone has come up with a easy to print off rules reference uh, for this game. I know it hasn't been out as long, but as badly as it's needed, I wouldn't be surprised if there is one, but I'm not gonna cut slack to the game because someone else can take and do the work that they should have done, that Devil Pig should have done uh, first off the bat, all right? Uh, one other thing that I want to point out, I don't remember if I pointed this out at the beginning or not, but there are issues as far as uh, Devil Pig's concerned, uh, concerns when it comes to their customer service. They are hard to get a hold of, and I can vouch for it because I attempted to contact them uh, myself concern, uh, concerning the video that I was going to do on it and still have yet to actually hear back from them. And that seems to be a major complaint is that they do not communicate well with their customers. So keep that in mind that if you haven't, if you buy one of the games and you actually have an issue like a misprint or something to that effect, you're probably gonna be SOL. It does not look like they'll take and get back to you if you have some issue that you need help with. Maybe if you buy it from a local game store, they'll work with you on it and exchange a copy or something to that effect. But if you have to go through the develop, uh, the publisher rather, you might be SOL, you know, just have to, you know, go with your gut on that. I'm not going to get too much into their Kickstarters. Like I said, uh, they do have some angry customers as far as late and lack of delivery is concerned on that. This is be, uh, besides the point, it's already out. You can buy it if you want. The price isn't bad, 50 to 60 bucks roughly, uh, depending if you get Amazon, eBay, the usual places they tend to have it. For what it is, the base game itself, if you are into 40K and you want a, you know, hex encounter, but square encounter version of 40K, you could play with a buddy in an evening, you could do far worse. I will recommend it for that. It is a fun game. I wouldn't recommend it necessarily for solitaire play. I just don't think it's conducive enough. If someone could come up with a system, maybe using these order tokens, they kind of automated one side or another that might change things up again someone maybe had uh, has one on bgg again i haven't checked uh solitary play just eh, not the best when it comes to this just because the order system not the worst either i mean if you've played just a regular hex encounter war game that you've had to play both sides you know it's it's going to be similar to that just i don't know I'm kind of going on feel on this. It just doesn't feel uh, as easy to solo. Maybe because of the tactics, the theme, I'm not sure. All right, but that's going to be it for me. That's my thoughts on it. Like I said, if you're into 40K, you're looking for something that's, you know, counter-based, uh, definitely check it out. I've enjoyed it. I love the counters, love the components. Just there are a few quality of life things they really should have changed that would have taken uh, this game to the next level. There are expansions to it, though, so if you want the game and extra units. Some of the special stuff like Terminators aren't included in the base set. I would have liked to have seen them included in the base set, but I get why they didn't because they want you to buy expansions. All right, but that's gonna be it for me. You guys take care. I'll catch you in the next one.